A winter blast. Get ready for the ice. Yeah, for a lot of you, the bad weather may be arriving at the same time as Santa Claus. Troopers in Watauga County are asking drivers to stay off the roads. Watauga has been under a state of emergency all night because of the weather. There is a state of emergency in Watauga County. Highway Patrol there telling people to stay off the roads because... We heard the damage compared most often to what this area saw during Hurricane Hugo. It wasn't cold during Hugo. Thousands of homes have been dark. To restore power in Watauga and Ash counties after what officials are calling the most destructive ice storm in years in the high country. Crews are up against. We're told the storm damaged nearly half of the 7,000 miles of power lines managed by Blue Ridge Electric. Welcome uh, back, everybody, to another episode of Unplugged. I'm your host, Jacob Puckett, and I have a very special guest near and dear to my heart today. My boss, uh, Director of Public Relations, Renee Walker. Renee, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Cold, but great. Cold, but great. It's very, very cold today, that's for sure. I think I saw three degrees in Boone. I think two degrees up in Ashe County. A balmy 14 down here this morning. So, I'm very, very cold, and we're going to hope our voices don't go out in the next few minutes. You got the coffee, so you were smarter than I did. <laughs> um, oh, I've got some water, but... Welcome back to another episode of Unplugged, everybody. We're going to talk about something that's really relevant to right now, uh, storm season, and we're going to talk about it from a little bit of a different angle. I feel like we talk about um, restoring power quite a bit, but we don't spend a ton of time talking about, well, what goes on behind the scenes, first of all, and then second of all, the communications angle of that and why it's so critical during a storm to make sure we're keeping the members informed and we're giving them the updates around the clock for whatever's going on, whatever situation we have, whether it's ice, snow, or wind. So, Renee, I actually want to jump into this first by talking about a little experience you had. You've been here over 20 years, and I already know the answer to this, but I want you to share it with class, so to speak. What storm sticks out in your mind? What was what was the storm for you so far in your career? Well, I've been here so long that the <laughs> ice storm of 2009 which in reality is still the worst storm in our cooperative's history to date. I believe I'm correct in saying that. Um, it started on Christmas Eve. It took down about half of our 7,000 miles of power line, broke about 200 power poles. There were members in the dark, um, some of them as long as six days. That was the best New Year's Eve message and celebration to have all of the power restored. We had 400 linemen in the field, and that's not just wow. Blue Ridge Energy linemen working around the clock. That was from 12 or 15 other co-ops who came to assist us. So something that I, I'm not sure um, people are aware of is just how hectic storms can be. Walk me through your personal timeline of that storm, because I know it started Christmas morning probably the most inopportune time for a storm to hit uh, the service area. So walk me through just what was life like for you? What were you doing? How did your life shift around in a matter of hours? Kind of tell people what all goes into those, I guess, first couple hours and what it's like for you to be in your shoes. Well, as the communicator, uh, you know, you and I are lucky. We get to be in our pajamas at home warm, if 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 so called, at that hour of the morning. Um, you know, our linemen out in the field, they were already out in the field, cold. It was icy. There was already members um, without power. When I got this call, it was Christmas morning and making pancakes for my two sons, who were little boys at the time, and said that was an ice storm. You know, we knew bad weather was coming, but this was became, over time, we saw a very highly unusual storm in Watauga County that affected primarily Watauga and Ashe Counties. And that's because it looked like a bomb had gone off in certain locations. It just took down the system. You could be one area, it would be totally devastated, and be a mile or two down the road and look as if nothing had happened. So my day started Christmas morning, and our alignment started even earlier than that. And of course, our members were we're experiencing it already. You know, during every stage of a storm, communication is such an imperative thing and keeping members informed. Why do you think it's so critical, especially during those big storms, to stay on top of that? It's critical in that we need to prepare uh, the members that we serve, the communities that we serve. If people are informed ahead of time, they can make preparations, they can follow along. 
the weather reports um, with their NOAA radios or with local weather, they can follow along with Blue Ridge. But it's critical um, for safety, first and foremost. So like you were talking about with the 2009 ice storm, it's it's hectic. There's a lot of people involved. I don't know uh, if everybody is aware of our storm team and who all is involved and what's going on behind the scenes with each role. You see the linemen out in the field. You see the trucks. You see the response to the outages. But do you want to dive in just a little bit on who's part of that storm team and then what we're doing behind the scenes, not only as communications team, but really as a cooperative as a whole? Yeah, good question. And a lot of people may not know, we have an emergency response plan that's that's filed. Um, each year we practice that. We have a systematic um, plan for each and every employee, actually. We have employees assigned to do pre-work like determining hotels and lining those up. Um, feeding our linemen is very important. So we partner with a lot of local restaurants and, and providers of food, local grocery stores. We have um, definitely our system operators monitoring our system 24-7 and working with um, others, our engineers, our um, all of the folks who are monitoring the system and going out in the field are preparing to assess the damage, um, review that, and, and work hand-in-hand -hand with our linemen and system operators to get the uh, power restored as quickly as possible. And a very important group that we, we cannot forget to mention because they're 24-7-2 is our contact center and our energy specialists and advisors who are on the front line serving our, our members. They're answering phones. They're on the um, online answering chats from our website. So they, they are definitely a very critical part. You may not, uh, you may call in and get our automated system, but you can always get a live person if you want it. And they are always here um, during storms, um, a lot of times after hours, helping answer those calls and reassure people and give information out. But that's, that's another reason why we do what we do in communications is to hopefully ease that load so members have somewhere to go to get information if they're just looking for an update on status of an outage. That outage map and us pushing out the information helps so much, helps, that, helps our, our contact center and helps our members that, that we're reaching. Um, who else am I forgetting, Jacob, that we've got working behind the scenes? I, I'm just, you know, you're bringing a lot of memories flooding back to me right there with the storms I've experienced. You know, I haven't been here that long, but either way. Um, I'm just thinking about the assembly line we have for making bag lunches and sandwiches. People don't think about you have mm -hmm. folks working in the field. Sometimes you have outside crews from, they're not from this area. They can be from many states away. So delivering food to those people that takes employees, yeah. someone's got to make the food, takes employees. Because a lot of times these grocery stores have limited stock at this point and the restaurants aren't open. So it's not as simple as just say, hey, send 30 of those line technicians over to a restaurant to eat dinner. I mean, we a lot of times have to provide those meals, three meals a day, uh, mm -hmm. which takes a tremendous amount of hands uh, to do that and, and deliver that food. And really, I, I have to say, it's just an all hands on deck effort. And mm -hmm. something I am curious about, though, that you kind of touched on, I specifically this question was going to talk about the media efforts during the 2009 ice storm, which, which I want you to touch on. But general, in general, excuse me, what do our media efforts look like? What are we trying to do? Why why do we do what we do from a communication angle during these storms? We do what we do in communications because that is part of serving our members, and it's a responsibility we have. It's They certainly expect that. Um, we want to keep them safe. We want to keep them prepared and informed, and this is one way that we can reach out to them and share um, the status that we're making, whether that's sharing with them on our outage map, that's a wonderful behind the scenes tool mm -hmm. that we keep updated in, in system operations to show where our linemen are, where, what the power restoration effort stands at, how many people are remaining off, where are linemen working. That's important. So we want to keep members informed so that they they know that we're out there working, they know what the status is at any moment. And that's a 24-7 um, around-the-clock effort, too. Um, if we need to 
to be doing media interviews at 5 a.m. We're doing that. If we're, we are posting on social media, we're updating our website, we're getting out news releases uh, really around the clock because that's how news information has evolved now. It used to be certain set times when the news was aired on TV, and you probably can't even remember that. But uh, growing I'm not up, that young. Come on now. <laughs> growing up in the age of social media, that's a wonderful tool, and it's also changed um, our landscape. That news is twenty four seven now, and, and our news media outlets are actually twenty four seven digital. And people has changed expect everything. to have it twenty four seven too. I think yes. that's a huge difference as well. Right. It's not just social media. It's a digital in all forms. It's it's really 24-7, and that's what consumers expect is whenever they turn on their device, they pick up their phone, they uh, turn on their laptop or their tablet, they expect to have information at their fingertips um, and that it be updated and current and accurate. And that's what we strive for at Blue Ridge Energy with our communications efforts. Now, listen, the kids today couldn't relate to this, but I am still old enough to remember waking up at like five o'clock on a snow day and turning that TV on to the local news station and then watching that ticker at the bottom to see if your school was uh, out for the day, you know, like it was the NBA or NFL draft. I mean, that that was a pretty electric moment there. And I still remember that. I hate that the kids have been robbed of that today, but they do get faster information now. I originally was going to put this one question on you to, to wrap it up, but I think we could both dive in on this. Winter's here. We're recording this in January coldest temperatures we've had since 2022 around December. How do I get prepared for the next storm? If I'm not prepared already, which I know a lot of our members are, how do I get prepared? Uh, I know for me personally, one thing that comes to mind is we like to tell people, if you have a medical need, some kind of medical necessity, and you're dependent on power, have a backup plan. You never know. Uh, We do a great job of getting the power on as quickly as possible. I, I mean, I think we do a phenomenal job of that, but you never know when the next 2009 ice storm's coming. And we work in a series of steps to get the power restored to get the most amount of members on as quickly as possible. So that's one thing that comes to mind. What, what about you as far as getting prepared? Right. The advice I would give to members to be prepared. Mm-hmm. Is that what you're at? So the advice I would give to members to be prepared for the next storm, which looks like it's coming soon is the time we're recording this, is make sure your mobile phone number is on your account. Yes. So many of us, I I would think nearly all of us have um, our cell phones, and that's our primary source of information. I'm so excited that Blue Ridge Energy sends out texting uh, for outages now. We, if your uh, mobile phone number is on our account, on our accounts here, then we can automatically send that message out to you if you're affected by an outage. So please have your mobile number on on your account here at Blue Ridge Energy so that we can reach you and give you that information, not only to let you know that power is out at your location, but updates and status reports along the way and when it's restored. And for folks listening to this, if, if that's new information to you, um, if you have a mobile number of Blue Ridge Energy, it, you're already signed up. You just need to text OUT, O-U-T, to 70216 when you have an outage. Um, there's more information about that on our website too, where we also have our storm room. We got a new mm-hmm. storm room page, so go check that out. And I'm trying to think of some other things as well that uh, kind of we see during storms. I know one thing that we you and I talk about quite a bit that's kind of hard to communicate about. You, please do not report outages on social media. Yeah. Um, we have no way to manually enter that from social media into our outage manage, management system, and plus. It's Renee and I monitoring uh, social media. We are the eyes, ears, and I guess uh, keyboard fingers behind social media. And you don't want to trust us to enter your outage. Come on now. <laughs> well, we've got thousands and yeah. thousands of members, and and you make a great point. We have uh, you want to call to report that outage. You can either call one eight hundred four four eight two three eight three, or as, as Jacob said, you can text out to 70216 if your mobile phone number is on our account. Then that will report the outage. You can also report it on our mobile app. So look for that in the mobile app store under Blue Ridge Energy. And you always want to report that outage. But, yes, we're monitoring that social media, and there, mm-hmm. there's lots of comments. You don't see the, the uh, private message comments that come yeah. in. So we're we're trying to keep up on all of that, and we we care and we want to respond, but the best way to report an outage is one of those three methods. Definitely. Stay away from uh, trying to report that on social media. I know personally, 
last big incident or storm that I can think of was that uh, huge cold spell we had December of last year. And I think at one point we were definitely averaging uh, over a hundred direct messages per hour, maybe, maybe more than that. So that's another reason too, is it, it can easily get lost. So text us, call us, report it on the mobile app. You can go on my account on the website and report it. There's so many different ways to report it. And uh, it's so many easy ways to report yeah. it. Now, there's more convenience than ever before. You don't even have to get on the phone if you don't want to. There is. Just text us. There is. Just text us. Just make sure your uh, mobile number's. There is. Yeah. And and we're doing other things as well. You're you're updating the website. Um, we're responding to um, news media calls uh, all the time or emails or texts. And we have a lot of local media interests. We really value those local news media partnerships. We but we also have regional um Charlotte area, Winston-Salem area, the these big storms sometimes have gone up to uh, statewide and national coverage. So there's a lot of response in 24-7 and responding to that and pushing out updates to to keep them informed so that they can help in turn keep our our members and, and others concer- uh, informed. Uh, a big audience that we hadn't mentioned yet or touched on, Jacob, is our emergency management folks in our communities. Yeah. And we also have an employee assigned just to be the contact for those important um, entities in our communities because they're providing shelter a lot of times. They're helping um, folks, elderly or those who need help, responding to emergencies. They're very important partners as well as local uh, law or fire and rescue. You know, so many times in all kinds of storms, even though we have a dedicated right-of-way program and trimming vegetation, keeping those uh, limbs and trees away from power lines so that we don't have as many power outages, we always want to balance the beauty of our area and keeping power on. So there's a, there's a balance there. But trying to cut their way into those locations sometimes, sometimes we've had to use bulldozers and many oh, times. Yeah. Hike into those areas yeah. and, and saw our ways into those areas. By hand, you know, it, in the best of circumstances, it only it takes a few hours to get a power pole back up. But can you imagine in in walking through several feet of snow or ice? You know, the 2009 ice storm was damaging because it was ice. That's more damaging than snow most of the time. And uh, I know our linemen keep their power saws sharpened at all times and, and have lots of tools to cut their way in. But that that's a big effort as well, too. So we partner with those folks. Well, if you weren't prepared for winter weather, you're prepared now, right? So right. Uh, I think we cover pretty much everything about our winter weather response. Get ready to head into the latter half of January and February. I'm sure we're not done with winter weather. Do follow us on social media. Do head to our website. You can keep track of updates there during any storm. We'll update you, like I said, on social media. Our storm room page, full of resources. Um, that's been updated. The outage map there. Uh, outage map is there, I should say. Ways to report outages. Generator safety, medical safety, um, information in Spanish, English, food yes. safety. I, I, we pretty much have everything on that page. So head to our website, check that out. Thank you for listening to another episode of Unplugged or watching another episode of Unplugged if you're on YouTube. We appreciate it. And until next time, I think that's going to be it for us. Thank you. Thank you, Renee.